we would call for the consideration of a return to categorical funding. We have reviewed the spending priorities established by the superintendent, the school board, and some of the principals, and found them acting like a mutual admiration society who have become overly ambitious with many of their spending priorities misguided. Sadly, the result is that certain teachers, programs, and classroom expenses have been slighted in favor of such things as excess administrative overhead or funding of pet projects. Where in the Spotsylvania School Board strategic plan, though admirable, do we find a call for expenditure of funds in the amount of $5,000 worth of fireworks at a homecoming while our teachers and students plead before this board that they themselves have been treated like second-class citizens? The cost of conference trips to Las Vegas, Toronto, Canada, New Orleans, Orlando, Florida, among others, are contributing to the shortfall in the classroom, which was created by bad spending priorities. Uh, we also reviewed the competing pet project IB program with all of its expenses. Expenses, by the way, that the school board was warned about in its August 2014 meeting. In order for a republic to work, we the people must do the work. I encourage you, all of you, to reach, and this is the board too, to reach out to the Citizen Budget Review Board. Jeremiah Hansen is the chairman, and I am grateful for his leadership and hard work. I ask you need to ask him, how can you help him? Find out how the county and the schools are spending your money. $800 in essential oils, $6,000 for a bookcase, uh, $40,000 for two chairs, just to, just to start. But this is a bare bones budget? I don't think so. You might be surprised to find that the bare bones budget in the school board has presented is not so bare bones at all. You might find out that the extra money that the Board of Supervisors manages to come up with for the schools each year never makes it to the classroom. And if you are a concerned parent, you might want to run for school board. So I just want to start by saying I'm speaking to clear up some misinformation spread within the community lately. Firstly, some of the programs we offer for our college-bound and gifted students have been attacked recently. The AP program is a staple in education and has been for many decades. We spend a mere 10000 per high school in AP funding. The governor's school allows gifted students access to curriculum with increased rigor and gives them the experience necessary to be successful at the next level. The IB program, with non-comp costs of $36,000, is an international program quickly gaining momentum and spreading across Virginia school systems. This allows our students to compete on an international level and is an asset for attracting international businesses such as Lidl. The county gave incentives totaling more than the school's gap to Lidl to attract them here. But even if we cut all these programs from the budget, it would only free up $1.1 million in funds to the cost of their students would be greatly exceeding that. Secondly, the superintendent's contract has been discussed. It is the role of the school board to hire and set the salary of the superintendent. The first contract reflected a first-time salary for a first-time superintendent, so it was below market rates. With experience and results, the next two contracts with a unanimous 7-0 vote by this board included an average increase of 4% over four years. That is the number. <laughs> it is less than the rest of the staff, which over the same four years got a 7% increase. He also mentioned if giving a percentage of his salary would help close the gap, he would do it. But that's pennies to the increases that we are faced with mandated by the state. Thirdly, Spotsylvania County Public Schools spends 0.17% of the budget for professional development. A total of $552,366. This is a great reduction compared to that of past years. We now send one representative to training and they passed the training along to the rest of the staff. We get more for our investment using this system. Also remember, professional development is funded with Title II funds and they can only be used for professional development. Only state, and there are also state funds that are allocated only for professional development. None of this funding can be used through the rest of the budget. It is supplemented with some local funds as a required local match. The state and federal funds cannot be spent on anything else. Just for reference, 
Fredericksburg Christian in 2015 spent over 11500 on five different conferences all over the nation. Those were using Title II funds, just as we did. We have 29 more schools and thousands more staff, so we are in line with other schools. Fourth, it's been mentioned by multiple people over the years, if one side of the county staff gets an increase, then they all should get an increase. All or nothing has usually been the practice over the years. Essential oils also have come up. They are used in cosmetology classes as well as for autism classes and to use ADHD to help treatment for focus for ADHD students. Lastly, on the counterpoints is to address the fireworks. We have answered this question many times, but to reiterate, these are purchased with student activity funds. These funds are raised, not tax revenue. These funds cannot be spent on supplies nor salary, but only for which the funds were raised. The school board has no discretion over these funds, and it's like telling Girl Scouts that they can sell cookies, but the government will tell them what they can purchase. Can you imagine this? We would all be cookie-less. Finally, I'd like to address the question posed by some of you as to how we came to the gap. The initial budget is no larger than last year. The only increases are the salary adjustment, the VRS, and the health insurance increases.